Hi, Corey Swan, Service Manager at the Mark Costello Company. Today's video, we're going to show you the standard vacuum pump system for our vacuum sterilizers. Behind me is a 10 horse vacuum, which is most commonly used on most of our smaller to intermediate size vacuum sterilizers. I'm going to give you a brief idea how this works and the number one issue we see for customers who over long time use need to learn how to adjust them. Be to begin with, this uses water to cool the pump. We've got an inlet water valve right here. It has to be open. It'll travel through the line. We have a strainer. Periodically, you're going to want to pull the plug at the bottom of the strainer and you're going to want to open it to flush out any residue in the center of the screen. If you do this periodically, say monthly or so, depending on the water quality in your area, you should never have to remove the screen to clean it. Now once that's done, when you turn it on, here's your pressure gauge. You want to make sure that you have a minimum of 40 pounds of water pressure coming through this gauge. Here we see a cross. Now we'll come back to it later, but it goes down to your pump service water. We'll come back to that in a minute. From the cross, it will also come up to a ball valve, which this ball valve wants to, you want it to remain open. Must stay in the open position, you have a solenoid. When your vacuum system starts, power will be given to this solenoid, thus allowing water to go through your system, bypassing it, to make sure your condensate cooler is filled up. You want to have that full of water before you start pulling hot steam and condensate through it. So, we've gone through this area. Through the center main leg, we have a thermal valve, which is reads from the cooling side of the water, and what this says is when the steam starts coming through the system at the end of a cycle, this valve is going to open up and it can let through a lot of water. So it can be adjusted for cooler or warmer temperatures. There is a thermometer on the back. We'll show you that in a minute. But you will want to check the thermometer at the top and the one on the rear when adjusting this to make sure that you keep your water. We like to see it go below 140 degrees before getting into a sanitary sewer. This is the common practice or rules of code across the United States. So it'll go up into your condensate cooler and cool it. Now the next leg, and we're going to talk about a little bit of adjustment on this one. This is your pump service water leg. It brings the water down. You're going to have two valves, sometimes a ball valve and a gate valve, sometimes two, two ball valves. The first one is going to want to remain open all times. So you're only going to close this to service the system. It also has a Y strainer that you'll want to open up and clean out periodically. It'll go through a solenoid valve. When your pump is going to start, your controller will tell them about 30 to 40 seconds before it actually lets any condensate through. Open this up and start the condensate or the pump service water. This valve and these gauges are very important. When you're pulling a vacuum with your system, there's a gauge and this also goes positive as well as negative. You want to stay between 7 and 10 inches negative on the gauge. So you'll do that by adjusting your water flow on this valve. Once you get that adjusted, your pump's water level will be correct. If you don't have enough pump water or service water in the pump, this is a uh, uh, liquid ring pump and you need to have water around the ring to create a vacuum. Too much water, you won't be able to pull enough air through it. So this is very important. This is going to keep you from having issues of not enough vacuum and if you learn to adjust this, you'll save yourself a lot of time and effort. The last thing you're going to want to see on these pumps is the air intake valve, which is right back here. It has a gate valve down below it. It also has a gauge off to the side. You're going to want to adjust this gate valve accordingly to see the gauge pull on the negative side of the vacuum. The higher you can get it, or more closed, less air you're letting in on the service side, the better your vacuum is going to pull the higher vacuums and get them quicker. So you'll need to learn to keep an eye on this gauge, but you'll only want to do both of these adjustments while the system is pulling your pre-vac. Now that we've given you an idea how the pump works on the water and the cooling side, let's show you where it comes from. The steam actually will come from the vessel. It'll be drawn into the pump through this line 
into your heat exchanger where it will be cooled by the water that we've previously discussed. It will then come out the bottom and it will go through this line over into the steam pump or into the vacuum pump. This is where the vacuum is actually created. We've already spoken about adjusting this. It will then go into a separator where it will be separated into gas and liquid. The gas will flow out through the top of a vent line. You normally plumb through the ceiling and inside indoor installation and just plumbed up to the side sky in an outdoor uh, insulation and all the moisture will come down through. We'll have cooling water as well, but we'll also have all the moisture and condensate from the inside of the vessel coming out to your drain and going into a sanitary sewer. Thank you.